Boys and girls, today's question is what makes a band successful? And how can we make your band more successful? That's a tough question, right? But I'll try to answer it. And you know, I've been working here as a music producer for 25 years. I've worked on countless metal and rock productions from very successful to not successful at all. And I've seen them all. I've seen bands coming and going. I've seen bands rising and signing record deals and playing worldwide tours. And I've seen bands failing. And I've tried to analyze this. And today I want to tell you what I think is one of the keys to success. And hopefully after watching this video, I will have inspired you to reanalyze your band, your project in order to make it more attractive to the world outside and make it more successful. All right, boys and girls, grab a beer or two. This might take a while and let me do the talking. Here we go. But here's a little disclaimer. When I talk about success in this video, I'm talking about commercial success. What is that? Well, that means getting a record deal, releasing records, selling records or streams these days. It means getting a deal with a booking agency and playing shows and touring the world, you know, and eventually even making money with the music. By the way, making money with music is nothing untrue and nothing bad. And even if you want to have commercial success, that doesn't mean that you're selling out or that doesn't mean that you make the music for the money, you know. Uh, don't start making metal for the money. Anyway, most musicians want commercial success. Why? Because it's nice to have fans and it's nice to play in front of bigger crowds and it's nice to travel the world. You know, that's just cool, right? If you are different, if you are an artist, just for the sake of being an artist, if you don't give a fuck about what everybody else thinks, if you don't give a fuck about commercial success, if, you, if you're just trying to express yourself through your art, fair enough, that's totally fine. And I mean it, that is fine. I'm full of respect for that. But please don't watch this video. <laughs> it's, it's gonna, it might have a bad influence on you. you know, it might be a bad influence. Um, it might just water down your true spirit, okay? We're talking about commercial success here, nothing else. I could write a book about this whole topic. So I thought like, where should we start? What is the most important topic? What is the biggest problem that I have witnessed over the years with a lot of bands? And there's one thing that came to mind. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. And that is that your band needs to tell a story. Your band needs to send a message. That is so important. I used to believe it's enough to write good songs and to play good shows or something. No, you need to send a message. Hey, your band needs an image. You need to tell a story. You need to send a message. That sounds like creepy music manager talk, you know, or the excuse by the A&R of the label not to sign your band. But I'm sorry, but it's true most of the time. Your band needs an image. You need to tell me a story so I care about you, so you get my attention. And the most important thing is that the more unique and the more consistent that message is, the more likely it is that your band will be commercially successful. It's not enough to write good songs. It's the whole picture. It's the whole product that counts. And if we talk about your band as a product, I'm sorry for this, all the different parts of this product, this is so important, need to tell the same story. They need to speak the same language, even the same dialect, okay? So the music, the lyrics, band photos, artwork, videos, the stage show, your, your stage clothes, your makeup, you know, your mask, whatever you might be wearing on stage, all those different parts of your product need to tell the same story. And the more unique that story is and the more consistent that story is, again, the more likely it is that you get people's attention. That message can be positive or negative or it can be disturbing or it can be uh, whatever, you know, it can be anything. We'll talk about that with a few examples in a minute. But if you're not sending a clear message people will not remember you. People won't even see you. They're not going to watch your show. They're not going to remember anything. The faster you will tell that story, the more attention you will get from both the music industry and normal music consumers. 
But let's just have a look at the history of heavy metal and let's just divide all famous metal bands into two categories. One side with bands that have a clear image and a clear message and the other side without. You will see that there are a lot more successful bands here. If we look at Alice Cooper, classic shock rock, imagine him without the makeup. If we look at Slipknot, imagine them without the masks. At Motley Crue, without the parties and the party songs and the party lyrics, you know, it all, it all worked together. One clear message. If we look at Rammstein, if we look at Marilyn Manson, even the band that invented heavy metal, Black Sabbath, they had the clearest, easy to understand message ever. And everything supported that new music, that dark music, everything around it, how they looked, the cover artwork, the live show, everything supported that dark and creepy occult message. And that's why the whole package was so attractive. And of course, it was something new. It doesn't really matter in which direction your message goes. For, there are, for example, those Norwegian black metal bands in, in the 90s and 2000s, bands like Mayhem, bands like Gorgoroth, and they have this satanic and dangerous image, a dangerous image, and that once again made them attractive. Maybe you don't want to meet them, but you know, you want to know more about them, they're dangerous. On the other hand, you have bands in the hardcore world, for example. Let's take Earth Crisis, a vegan straight edge band with a political message and actually a positive message to live drug free. So that was also something people could relate to. That was also telling a clear story and you could see the eggs on their hands on their live shows, you know, always going into that direction. And, you know, so you have Mayhem on one side telling you a very, very dark story, sending you a very dark message. And then you have bands like NoFX celebrating a party and having humor and being funny. And it all goes together and it just works because they're all sending a clear message that makes you remember those bands, that makes them special and that makes you want to check out their stuff. It's that simple. But let's be honest, let's tell the full story. On the other side, there are actually bands that made it, that became successful without any image at all. Most of them, for some reason, are in the progressive metal world. I guess it's just more about the music in the progressive metal world, right? No, don't get me wrong, I, I, I love prog metal. That's where I come from, actually. And um, let's take one example. Let's take the band Opeth and Mikael Orkerfeld. What a genius, you know. I, I still love their first albums when they came out in the 90s. They started as a progressive melodic death metal band and emerged into, what are, what are you doing now? Some kind of 70s vintage psychedelic crowd rock or something, which I'm not a big fan of, but I'm full of respect because it has always been about the music and nothing else. There has never been a clear story to tell. There has never been an image around Opeth. They didn't even have band photos in the beginning. And later it have, has always been like four or five dudes in jeans and t-shirts. There was no look, there was nothing. There was just the music to speak for itself. And I mean, that can work, right? That can work. It's very interesting to see that how they have managed to stay that successful and become bigger and bigger over the years. They could even change the style of music and people are still following them without having any, like, like yeah, a, a real image. So it is possible to become successful without an image. It is just, believe me, the hardest way to do it because you only have the music to be attractive. You don't have anything else. It worked for Opeth, but even for other bands which are musically unique, it's still better to have an image. Let's have a look at Rammstein, for example. Rammstein, I mean, they are so musically damn unique. You know, it takes you five seconds to, to tell it's Rammstein, even without Till Lindemann singing. And in Germany, we have this genre called Neue Deutsche Härte, which basically means you're trying to sound like Rammstein. They have invented that kind of, that kind of style. So bands like Eisbrecher, or I have worked with a band called Hematom, they go into that direction, all invented by Rammstein. And I remember when the first album, Herzeleid, came out, I was still in school and I was disturbed and I was shocked because, you know, it was just, first of all, he was singing German and then uh, das R. He was rolling the R. What the fuck is that? They had short hair. Come on, this is metal. We're naked. 
and 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 the riffs sounded like marching German soldiers. So I was I was disturbed. That was weird, but it was also very attractive. What I'm saying is, they they were musically unique, but they didn't stop there. What made them so big was the combination of that music with their huge and intense and big live shows. Have you ever seen a Rammstein live show? Please, please do it if you haven't. The live shows and the videos. And they were just as disturbing as the music. They, they did that porn video. They did that video where they were fat and ugly. And what else? They had this video with footage from the Nazi Olympic Games in Berlin in the 30s, you know. It was always a little disturbing. And again, it goes into the same direction like the music supports the music, the show, the videos, the photos, everything. And it was different. And that made them that big. So what I'm saying is, yes, you can make it without an image. Uh, you can make it without videos and photos and stories to tell and, and, and a message to send. You can just write great music, but it is the toughest, the hardest way to go. Maybe you can compare this to movies. There are some movies where the basic story is so good and so fascinating that you don't need a lot of special effects and, and other stuff around it. And then there are other movies that actually live from the special effects and all the, the, the stuff around it because it just, you know, takes the story to another level. Both is possible, this is a lot easier. Now that we have hopefully understood that having an image and having a real message really helps. Now the question is, how can we help your band? Or to be precise, how can you help your band? What I want you to do is take one step back and try to analyze your band from the outside. I want you to find out two things. What makes your band great? What is the strongest part about your band? That's the first question. Second question is, what makes your band unique? And we're talking about the music here, okay? First of all, it's only the music. The interesting part is that those two things are very often the same. What makes it strong, what makes the music strong, is very often also something unique. So I want you to analyze your riffs. Which ones are the strongest? Talk to people, talk to your fans, ask people. Maybe the slow riffs or the fast riffs. Which instrument is the strongest? The drums, the guitars, the vocals? Is it the complexity of your compositions? Or is it the catchiness of your choruses? Is it how brutal you are or how fast you can play? Or is it the melodies or something? What makes your music strong and what makes it special and unique? And once you have found out what that could be, I want you to focus on that. So even if you are a thrash metal band and you find out that the clean intros are actually the strongest part, hey, focus on the clean intros and try to make songs out of them. That's what you should do. Focus on the unique and strong parts of your music that people can remember, that people like to listen to. And once you've done that, once you've found the music, then you make sure that all the other parts around it, the lyrics, the photos, the image, the live show, that everything syncs and supports the music. So make sure you make the music stronger by adding the other parts of your image and by creating a consistent message for everybody. And now it might get a little complicated because you might think, okay, I just found out that the, the brutal riffs and the brutality of our music is the strongest part. Fair enough. So you might think, okay, th that means if we're making brutal music, we gotta look brutal. And we gotta have a brutal live show, you know, blood shower and whatnot. Um, maybe, but in this example, it might be smarter to do the opposite because the history of heavy metal is, is full of blood showering, you know? So, um, so maybe you should do exactly the opposite or something else that is disturbing that you usually don't do in death metal. Have you ever been to a death metal festival with like 10 bands playing? It's so boring, even if you like death metal. I mean, live it very often sounds like a, like a fucking bulldozer anyway. And then they all look the same. They all headbang the same. They all have the same shirts. They all fucking, it's all the same. So it's so boring. So if you are that one band, if you are that one band, dressed as pink elephants that are like getting stabbed during the show. I'm pretty sure I will remember you. I will go home and say like, ah, 
those guys were kind of interesting and I'm pretty sure I will check you out the next day on Spotify because you were different. So that means supporting the music with the other parts of your image doesn't mean you have to fall for cliches, you know? If you are a New York hardcore band, why don't you start singing about uh, whatever, uh, witches and dragons or something like Blind Guardian and combine that into something cool and new? You know, it doesn't always have to be the same shit that everybody has been doing all the time. So. Try to find out what's, what's special about your music and then you add parts that make sense but are not fucking cliches that we have seen a million times. Because then you end up like most bands I have worked with and most bands everybody else works with who try to be copies of their idols. And then you end up doing albums that sound good with good riffs and the guys can play and everything, like a solid product. But that's not really gonna take you anywhere. That's just solid. That's not mind blowing or anything. So yeah, try to be a little different. Here's one last and very important advice. Please stay true. Don't create an image you're not comfortable with. Don't do anything you don't want to do just to get people's attention. That's not going to work. You have to feel comfortable with whatever you create. In the rock and metal world, you're not going to become a rock star in two days anyway. That means you got to maintain, you got to be able to maintain that image throughout an entire career. You don't have to be 120% dead serious. It is a stage persona, you know, it can be different, but you should feel comfortable with this. You should be true to yourself. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Last words. I talk to a lot of people in the business from rock record companies and festivals and others. And we all know that metal as big as it is, has commercially gone down in the last decade, especially compared to hip hop rap music, which is much bigger. Uh, it's not about being that popular, but one problem I think is that metal is getting older and older. Just look at the headliners at the big festivals, you know, those Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, ACDC, Metallica, you know, bands that, that already, they, they were already old when I was young, you know, and they are, they're the headliners now. So uh, where are the young bands, uh, young and innovative bands? So I'm really hoping that the whole metal scene will become younger again, younger than, than this guy, for example, and that there will be a lot of innovation. So that's what I'm asking you for. Analyze your band, try to support what's special and come up with something new and interesting. And even if you don't sound like everybody else right now who's big in metal, that gives you a much bigger chance to become successful in the future. That's all I wanted to tell you today. Um, please subscribe to this channel. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, um, criticize me. I can take it. No problem. Uh, but stay polite. Uh, that's all for today. See you in hell, my friends. See you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.